see me? <laughs> oh, re-recording this intro because anyway. Hey, I want to share with you a video on how I photographed uh, this Mezco Pennywise action figure. Uh, you know, it's a pretty cool video. It follows the same process that I normally do where I ramble. And in between all my ramblings, I explain to you what I'm doing. <laughs> it's it's a proven teaching method. Um, but anyway, no, uh, you know, I go through and I show you how I set up the lights, how I build each light up in the scene, and uh, why each light has a certain purpose, and, and why everything means something when you're doing uh, toy photography uh, or miniature diorama photography. You know, the cool thing I, I love about that kind of photography is there is nothing in that scene that you didn't put there intentionally. When you create a photo like this, every single thing from highlights to placement of spray paint cans to poses to light temperatures, you know, everything is intentional. And, you know, and that's the beauty of, of that type of photography. Anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. For those of you that have not, please do so. I will include timestamps and affiliate links in the description down below. Check out my website, insightfulimagery.com, for some really cool photos. And, uh, you know, you can see all the types of photography that I do. Sunsets, birds, Milky Way, toys. I do a lot of stuff. Drones. Uh, check out my website, Facebook, Insightful Imagery. Instagram, Insightful underscore imagery. Check me out. I'm everywhere. Take care, guys. I just kind of, you know, grab my camera. I've already got a lens selection for this. I want to kind of just sit here and make sure that this is going to be an angle that I think I'm going to like, and it's going to hide what I want hidden. Um, and the pose looks pretty decent. And I'm just going to turn my camera on and kind of, like I say, go through a loose composition here to where I want to make sure of a few things. I want to make sure I have enough in frame blank wall so that I can spray paint the message. I want to make sure you can see this is a hand and that we're hiding some of the hot glue and the wire behind him. Now I can edit out the wire behind him. That's not a big deal, but the less editing I have to do, the better. So I want to make sure that Mainly, there's enough blank wall here to accommodate a graffiti type message uh, that I'm going to create in Photoshop. And just that it's a cool looking pose. And it is. It looks pretty decent, man. We, I can get behind that. We can we can work with that composition. Uh, I'm just using a 100 millimeter macro here. I would, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off an overhead light. I, I really want to just loosely see how I'm going to light this. I have an idea in my mind of how I want to light this, or or not how I want to light it, but I, what, what I want the outcome to be, and um, now I'm just going to try to work that out with my lighting uh, and make it happen. I'm going to bring this down on my C-stand here. I'm using the Explore 600. It's what I always use. Um, I think we're going to keep the light low and on him. I don't want any awkward shadows. I want to keep the shadows against the wall. If I put the light back here, it's going to cast shadows that way. If I put the light up here, it's going to cast shadows that way. If I keep the light right here, it's going to keep his shadow right on the wall. Uh, but let me, uh, now that I've got that kind of in the place that I wanted, I'm going to turn my modeling light on it. Now that I've kind of got that in, worked out in, a, in an area, I think it's going to be okay. We'll shut it off. And um, that's going to be my main light, okay? I, I didn't mention that I do have a, in this main light, let me show you real quick. I do have a, uh, a grid, a really tight grid. Um, and use this it's, it's a 20 degree grid i want to use this really not the whole thing to light on him but just feather the light so i'm going to angle the light ultimately so that it feathers on him and this grid prevents 
uh, light spill from going in places I don't want. I want to incorporate some other colors of light in here, not just the, the main light. We've got a pretty constrained area here with the, the grid. It's only really going to light this area, so none of this is really going to be visible. Um, I'm, I will turn on the... the uh, overhead sign light I have. But what I want to do, I really like some red light shining down maybe on the back side of him. Uh, and so the way I'm going to do that is with a loom cube. I've got in here now a greenish colored uh, gel that we're not going to use. Uh, and this is red. So what I was saying is um, I bought a speed light years ago and it came with this really flimsy gel material and I like it because this other material that I have is really thick and it doesn't work as well with a loom cube. Anyway, uh, so I like it really flimsy because I don't have to cut anything out of my gel stock. I can put it right over there, slide this little adapter right over the top of my loom cube. Now loom cube does sell their own gels and magnetic things, but you know what? I'm not going broke trying to make my light turn red. Okay. So then we've got that gel in there. We can pop that rascal on there or I do have a snoot. We could use you know what, though? I think I might use this diffuser. Let it spread a little overhead red light out on the top. That might look good. Let's... That's orange. To heck with it. Orange it's going to be. You know why? Because I'm not going to go back in the bag and grab a red one. So what, what I did here is I went ahead and I'm just going to go a little cuckoo with it. So I just went ahead and put a magenta because I love magenta, man. Put that in the light uh, loom cube and I'm going to shove it back here behind the door and that's going to see if I can show you guys just going to create a little light spill on the floor that's all uh, and it's going to simulate perhaps maybe like a little siren on top of the roof that you know the the, the asylum has been compromised Pennywise is having a you know lunatic fit and he's out here dancing around and so the alarms are going off and that's what this is going to kind of simulate but anyway i yapped enough let's get to taking some pictures so what i want to do here guys is i'm going to go ahead and set up my tripod i'm going to set my camera onto the tripod and uh i want to i'm going to have to use a remote shutter uh a remote trigger on this because I'm going to have to fire the camera while I hold that separation light on uh, Pennywise. I need to be able to hold a light over him and that's the only way that I can realistically do it is if I use a, one of these uh, this is an, actually an intervalometer. I use it when I do the Milky Way when I photograph Milky Way but it is also a shutter release. Um, and so one of the things I'm proud of today is that I plugged it in before I actually set, composed my image and focused it. I remember to plug it in first usually. <laughs> usually I get it all set up and it's all focused and I'm like, damn it. Now let me go ahead and grab my trigger here um, and get it on the hot shoe. You don't need 600 square foot of floor space to take pictures of a six and a half inch action figure. So still talking about lighting, we're at the point now where I've got everything set up. Camera, you know, my lights. I haven't done my real composition and focus yet, but uh, let's just talk about lighting. I've got all my lights set up. So once I've got all my lights set up, I need to figure out, uh, I'm going to feather the light on the edge of this, what I'm doing now, just on the very edge of Pennywise right there. I need to figure out my exposure, what f-stop I'm going to use, and uh, how to set my flash. Um, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So now that I've got, and I can see where the light is falling on Pennywise, 
The back side of him is just lit with the very soft edge of the uh, main light. And the bulk of the light is going to the right of him, which is perfect because that's where the spray painted message will be. So let me turn the modeling light off now that I've got the main light set up just where I want it. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a, compose this shot really quickly just so I can get an exposure. Um, this isn't to make the, to do the actual shot. This is just to start getting my exposure and stuff dialed in. Uh, eye level is best, especially with little characters like this. Get this pesky old strap out of the way. But, uh, okay, set that there. We're just about ready to go. Set that rascal up over there so I can open uh, this is on. Okay, open this. So let's uh, just get a real quick focus on this. Now, one of the things that I'm going to have to kind of play with this, I might move my camera angle just a little bit that way. Because part of the problem is, remember, we wanted a spray paint a graffiti message on there. We're going to change our white balance over here. Whoops. Okay, we're going to go over here, and we're going to change our white balance to flash. And I remember when I first bought this camera, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to use the back of this camera, you know, the screen. <laughs> but now it's it's like it's what I do. We're going to change that to flash. Okay, we're good on that. Uh, our white balance is now flash. We are at ISO 100. We are uh, full, and uh, I don't want to do high-speed mode. I want to do... Um, timer, or actually I know I want to do a single shot, and I'm going to use my uh, shutter release that we have plugged in. We're going to use a single point AF, and we're good with that, single point AF. And really, uh, we're at one ninetieth of a second. Um, let me see what channel we're on on the main light. Okay, there we are, we're one one sixteenth flash duration. Um, so I think... We're going to go ahead and just really quickly see what that main light looks like as we uh, get this dialed in. Let's focus on his face real quick. Okay, we're looking good right there. That's five times. We're going to go to ten times. There we go. Gosh, man, these guys do an incredible job with these Mezco figures, man. Their faces are just ridiculously realistic. Okay, F8, um, let me turn the light off on my monitor. We, we really want to have no uh, light interfering with the exposure. So let me turn my overhead light on. And once again, we're just right here. All we're doing is making sure my main light is going to be set at the exposure that I want. Uh, or at the, it's going to be the correct exposure for the settings that I have. And we're not going to do one ninetieth of a second. We're going to do, we're going to go down here to one second. Okay. Now, let me turn my, intervalometer on. Okay, that's on. And I think I have my lens set to manual focus. I hope so. If not, it's going to start to focus. Yeah, it shows that I'm in manual focus. So let's go ahead and take a shot. And let's just look at the back of the camera and see what, if I ruined it. Yeah, I ruined it. That's pretty bright right there. I want it bright, but that's a little brighter than I want. So what we're going to end up doing is, in this case, since my... Flash is as low as it can go, 1 one twenty eighth. Um, I have a couple options. I can move the light back. Or I can, I can't really adjust my, I can adjust my shutter speed on here because shutter speed controls your ambient light. The problem with that is I'm going to introduce loom cubes later, so I need to drag my shutter to, to, to pick up the light of the loom cube. So I think in this case what I'm going to do is move my light back just a little bit. 
bumping the eye, bumping the uh, the um, aperture isn't a bad idea too because remember we have three three planes of focus that we need to make sure we get make sure we get uh, in focus without having to do any image stacking really. Um, so that being said, let me turn on these lights and we're going to adjust my main light. So what I did is I just moved my main light back a little further away from the set. Uh, so let's go ahead and we can't go, we can't go, remember we can't go down any further on the flash duration of the strength of the flash that really fixed it that fixed it phenomenally we did two things i moved the light further back and i uh adjusted i stopped down a little bit to f11 okay and that's going to help me out in the long run anyway so not a big deal we're looking good with that okay let's go ahead and do some other lights okay so now that we've got our main light set up We've got our comp, we've got our light, we've got our main light set up, we've got our composition, we've got our settings dialed in to the intensity of the light uh, to get the right exposure for, for what I'm trying to do here. Let's go ahead and add our other lights. Uh, I'm going to go over here to my loom cues and I'm just going to push the button and turn them on. Okay. Uh, I've got two loom cubes here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the Loom Cube app. We're going to go over here to the Loom Cube app. Once I find it on my screen here. And we're going to open the Loom Cube app. And what it's going to do is show me that there's two Loom Cubes here. We're going to turn all on. Okay, both of them are on. And we can adjust the intensity of the brightness. There's the purple one. That's the one that's going to be behind the door. We'll set it right there. We'll put it behind the door. Get behind the door. Okay. Then the intensity of the uh, orange one, we're going to decide once I take the shot and I'm holding it over the top of him. But for now, let's go ahead and just put it about right there. About 11%, okay? Uh this brings one other thing to mind I forgot. I do need to change my camera setting to um, timed mode. Turn this off. Turn this off. Find my way in the dark. We're going to, we've got all our extra light sources under control. We're going to let the 10 second timer start and we're going to just, this orange might be a little more intense, but we'll see. And let's see what that looks like. Here on the camera, I'll bring it up oh, on the screen, baby. Oh, I like 7582, but let's talk about what's wrong with it. Oh God, is there anything wrong with it? Of course there's something wrong with it. I forgot to turn the darn sign on. <laughs> Stay tuned for a second video where I show you how I process this photo in Photoshop and fix that. Okay. Take a look at that. And I... I, I do like that. It's nice. Got some good glow coming behind the door. 7856. I think we're good with that. Let's do 7856.